So welcome, Syed, to our new podcast episode about investment in Dubai. Uh, you were a real estate broker, very successful guy in Dubai. And yeah, so welcome and uh, tell the audience who you actually are. Thank you so much, Chris, for inviting me on your podcast. Uh, so if I tell you about myself, uh, I'm living in Dubai over 15 years and I'm a, one of the signature real estate broker in Dubai. I like to call myself not the broker. I would like to call myself a property consultant. This is what I do. Working in Dubai real estate uh, from past 10 years, that gives me a inside and outside knowledge of Dubai real estate market. So I'm glad to be here to share how can an investor or a client or a tenant can benefit from this podcast. Nice. Thank you for that. So how can they benefit from that if they're outside of the country? If I share one of my client journey with you, you will be surprised. There are people sitting in a different part of the world and they are buying Dubai real estate just like they are buying a chocolate. So if I quickly pull up my client's detail, so basically his name is Sachin. He's a doctor. He's based in Bahamas. He got in touch with me through my YouTube channel and he sent it to me a message uh, saying, good morning, Saeed. This is Sachin from Bahamas. It was uh, 5.42 a.m. in the morning and I responded to him 6 a.m. in the morning. That's how quick I like to respond to my clients. And we, we got on the phone and then we started explaining him the Dubai real estate, why you should invest. After having a clear understanding of Dubai real estate market, he decided to go ahead and purchase a property worth of $500,000. And straight up, I can show you on the screen record, he sent me his credit card details and a bank transfer within three hours of time. And once I received the payment, I sent him the repayment receipt, everything was done, just sitting, he's sitting in Bahamas. All the paperwork was done in Dubai just within a couple of hours. That's how easy for the client, for a international clients to purchase a property in Dubai. And I would like to also share one of the experience. Uh, if you compare the countries, Dubai <coughs> is on a very easy side. If you see, if I compare Dubai with Canada, let's say, Canada, if you want to purchase a property, you not only need a broker, you also need a lawyer with you to purchase a property. In Dubai, you don't need a lawyer. Good property consultant can advise you depending on what is your requirement, why you want to enter in Dubai real estate market, then he can complete the transaction from A to Z. Yeah. And what did the client send you? So he sent you the payment to you as an agent or to the developer? It's a very important point to note in the video is uh, no broker has the right to get the money in his or her personal account. Anytime you deal with a client, you gotta pass the escrow account, which is managed by RERA, Dubai Land Department. And it is on the project name. If you're buying, let's say, Chris Tower in Dubai, you need to have a escrow account on that Chris Tower name. So when the client see the bank details, he can see this is the tower I am buying in and this is the escrow account I am paying for. So this way, government is securing all the international buyers to invest in Dubai real estate market. Now, once the client is paid the money to the escrow account, company, a developer cannot withdraw the money straight up they have to complete they have to complete the construction stages then there will be a survey from the government then the government release the money after every phase of the construction so in the end the step would be from the client in bahamas or any other client in the, around the globe um, you will send them the bank details but how easy is it to get these bank details as you say for every developer it's different correct yeah so can anyone have access to it or do you need to apply for this account so basically before you even announce the project in dubai real estate in the market you need to have a square account that's uh, that's the legal terms of uh, you as a developer 
before you even announce the project, before even you launch the project in the market, you gotta have a escrow account. If you do not have a escrow account, you're not allowed as a developer to sell your project in the market. If developer is asking to pay the money in their private account, they will be penalized. Okay, and every developer has an own escrow account. Is it also per building? differently or is it one escrow for all the buildings of one developer? Yeah, so basically let's say if uh, the developer has a 10 projects going on, they need to have separate bank accounts for all the project. They cannot say we already have a square account and the one square account can be used for multiple projects. No, if you starting a project A, you gotta have a account, a square account for a project A. Project B, then Project B. So every project should have a separate bank account. Okay, so you send the client the bank account. Yeah. Uh, you got his passport copy. Yeah. His phone number, email. Yeah. And what else was needed? So basically, if uh, someone wants to buy a property in Dubai, if you are an international client, all you gotta do is you gotta give your passport copy, your uh, ID proof, where you're staying, your residence proof, and the money, that's it. And make sure whenever you buy a property in Dubai, you pay straight up in the escrow account of the project. So always pay into the always, escrow account. Always pay through escrow account. Once you pay the money, the broker job is to help you to provide the payment receipt for what you have paid. Then they will send you a booking form that has to be signed by the buyer and the broker and the developer. Then followed by SPA, that's sales and purchase agreement. You gotta see the sales and purchase agreement before you even sign. There are a lot of clause on the SPA, let's say for the resale. So if you wanna sell a property, resale your property, if your SPA says you are only allowed to resell your property after 40% of the payment, maybe the broker might say it is only 20%. You cannot always uh, believe what the broker is saying. It is always good to double check what is written on your sales and purchase agreement. Yeah. At the end of the day, your sales and purchase agreement is gonna be helpful for you to resale your property. Mm -hmm. And once he made the payment, how long did it take to get the contract, the approval, because he's paying, but he needs to see something. Yeah. So basically, once he's paid, immediately he can have a booking form, which is called also a, a reservation form. Once he has the reservation form, once he has the payment receipt, that proof is more than enough for a client to have a piece. Mm -hmm. Then, most probably it's going to take a week or two to get the sales and purchase agreement. These days, what a developer is doing is they are sending sales and purchase agreement on your email. You can uh, even uh, do a e-signature. So you, mm -hmm. before we used to print the SPA, send the SPA by courier to the client. If someone is in US, so it takes time to get to the courier, they sign then courier it back to mm -hmm. Dubai. Now on the email, you can have the SPA, you can sign on the email and it's done. So once the, we receive the signed SPA from the client, the developer, what they're going to do is they will take the SPA reservation form and the documents, they will register the property under client's name, which is called as a Ukud. Mm -hmm. That's your ownership certificate. Mm -hmm. Before it's re completed. Before it's completed. If your property is off plan, you will get the Ukud. If your property is ready, then you get a title deed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what uh, amount did the client pay? So uh, 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 there are uh, various options in the yeah. market. There are people, they, <laughs> the, there are companies, they ask you to pay 10% down payment. There are companies ask you to pay 20% initial down payment. So it's always based on which project you're buying in. It's always based on uh, what is the payment plan from the developer. Okay, and this uh, developer or this unit, what, what was it? How much did he pay? 10%, 20%? Sorry? The client you had now, what, yeah. what developer was that and how much so, did he pay? Yeah, so uh, my client, uh, Bahamas client, he <coughs> bought a, a townhouse in Damak Lagoons uh, and at that time uh, we had the payment plan which is 60-40. So he got to pay initial down payment as 20% plus 4% Dubai land department charges. So if you got to understand, any time you purchase a property in primary market from the developer stock, 
you gotta pay initial down payment plus you gotta pay four percent dld dld stands for dubai land department then once you pay that and there are some a couple of uh, thousand like a two three thousand dirham for the good charges uh good certificate and including the admin fee once it is paid then they are good to register the property on your name okay but how did this client already have your trust did you market yourself on youtube so basically when you uh, go on the channel you can uh, have a understanding what kind of person you are dealing with from the way the person is talking okay. then uh, you look then uh, this is why we say in the business uh, your first impression is the last impression so you always got to have that personality of uh, you showing who you are on the social media okay. you can't be someone so you can dress well you can uh, uh present the project in a way that your video is very clear and it uh, then the client they look at the video they understand this video this guy i can trust let me get in touch with him then that's how we break the eyes then the client comes to me i got on the phone then uh, my question to the clients is why are you looking to invest in dubai real estate for me as a property consultant it's very important to understand why someone wants to buy in <coughs> Dubai real estate. So there are multiple reasons. There are people they want to buy because uh, there are a lot of tax in their country. There are people they want to buy property in Dubai for golden visa. There are people want to buy a property in Dubai because it's a high ROI, return of investment. When we talk about return of investment, it's a very, by the way, it's a very interesting topic. So I like to highlight, there are a lot of two types of investor in the market. One is looking for ROI, which stands for return of investment. One is looking for ROE, return of equity. So what is the difference? So return of investment, what we look at is on a long term. Return of equity, what we look at is, let's say you bought a property of a million dollar and you pay 20% down payment to purchase the property and you, the project is sold out and you want to resell your property. Now, you have a buyer to buy your property and you're reselling property, just you paying 20%. You haven't completed the payment yet. So if you're charging a premium 30%, so you only paid 20% down payment of a million dollar property. So 20%, which is about 200,000, uh, sorry, 20% is about $200,000. Now, you made a $300,000. So you can see it is almost like a 60% on return of equity. And that's already, you haven't even started yet. You're not even started because the project was in hype <laughs> and the uh, project got sold out and everyone rushed to buy in this project because mm. it is in demand. That's why everything got sold out. And now this is another uh, point to highlight why sometimes you gotta be the first not last because if you don't be the first someone else is gonna be the first they will take your opportunity to invest sometimes a lot of buyers they say like hey you know what give me some time give me two days three days four days when you are buying in a seller's market you don't have time you gotta understand are you buying at the right price are you buying with a good developer? Are you buying someone who's giving you a good construction quality? These are the stuff which you gotta look into. Are you buying in a great location? Then that's it. When you understand all of this, you gotta take a decision spontaneous. That's how investor, most of the investors, they make money. Mm -hmm. People who like to risk, uh, there's something called taking a risk. There is something called taking a calculative risk. Because now if someone wants to buy with uh, EMR, let's say, they know already EMR is spread over uh, UAE yeah. and they are one of the top developers in Dubai. And uh, uh, buyers and the investors, they also do their due diligence of the market. And they know like uh, this developer, okay, they have delivered uh, multiple projects, so many projects, and they can also see the quality of construction uh, and also they can see the time of delivery. So based on this, you can do your judgment for the projects, what uh, any project comes in the future. Then you got to take a spontaneous decision 
as an investor, you gotta be the first, not last. If you don't, then someone else take your but, opportunity. But uh, you say be the first, but it can happen that it's just also you make a too quick um, decision buying something because you think, oh, I have to be quick. I'm making a crazy deal, but in the end, maybe the person he can't even pay his installments, and then you get these distress deals. Yeah. So okay, there's one thing you gotta understand. Any time you think to invest in Dubai real estate market, you gotta have the money. You can't just have 20% of the property value thinking I'm gonna buy this property and I'm gonna flip this property. You can't enter Dubai real estate based on this strategy. You gotta understand, I'm gonna put 20%. If I don't find the buyer, I should be able to complete my payment plan. If you don't complete, then developer will pressure you to pay your payment. Then you might start getting a legal uh, emails. Then you might start ending, uh, losing your property. Then you might not, you, you might even end up with a lawsuit. So you don't want to be greedy. A real estate market is very good, but you need to have your money with you before you invest in Dubai real estate market. Always play under your limit. Do not go over your limit. The moment you go over your limit, then you risking your investment, you risking yourself with a lawsuit. So I would highly recommend you only enter in Dubai real estate market when you have the money. At least what you need is the payment plan, the money, which you, let's say if the payment plan is 80-20, uh, you gotta have at least 80%. At the time of handover, you can, if you don't have a money, you can probably get the bank mortgage from the bank. Um, what do you think of like, there's so many developers and agents, I think there's 16,000 brokers maybe in Dubai at the moment. More than this. More than that, yeah. yeah. Um, how can the client know that he's at the right broker so what makes you like unique you think um, being here now 15 years 10 years in the in the real estate market because um, of course we have new people new investors who are trying they have never, no experience about the investment opportunities and about the Dubai real estate market but what happens if they get like got to get the wrong information because the broker he just wants to get his commission does it happen a lot, do you think? Uh, there is a lot. So uh, what uh, happens in the market is there are a lot of uh, new brokers in, in the market and they claim to be uh, 10 years of experience or 15 years of experience in the market, but uh, that was their first month. <laughs> now, you as an investor, you know that uh, you made your money from whatever the resources you have back in your country. You made that money using your skills so you need to understand you need to check who you are dealing with you need to use that skills to understand your broker very well if he or she is a really experienced property consultant in dubai or he or she just trying to you know like a create a story i'm closing a lot of deals i am working in dubai real estate from let's say 15 20 years but he or she might not be working this long and also the moment investor knows, the moment they get on the phone, within two, three, four questions, they can analyze if what the person is saying, is it all true? There are a lot of brokers, they say like, hey, uh, you know, I'm trying to help you, I'm trying, I'm trying to be a property consultant, but they are only looking for that one-time transaction. Yeah, you gotta understand like a, a real property consultant would always have a repeat buyers with them. They always work with the investors. So if I sell you property today and uh, later a year, if I am a good real estate consultant, <clears throat> you will definitely come back to me if you need a second property. So you coming back to me makes me a good property consultant because you trusted my services a year ago and now you're back again with me and that to knowing the fact there are so many brokers in Dubai real estate that's what a real property consultant is having a repeat buyers working with the investors this is how the property consultant should be and can a client uh, also go directly to the developer it's a very interesting question. I would love to answer this. 
if a client is going directly to the developer, client is not going to benefit in any way. Client, sometimes they think like, if I am buying directly from the developer, I'm going to get some certain discounts or, uh, you know, like I'm going to save the commission. So basically, client is using a property consultant absolutely free when a broker is selling a primary stock straight direct from the developer if you're buying an off-plan property. So broker does not charge client. And now, client use broker knowledge experience to invest in Dubai real estate market for free. So clients should not be afraid of a broker to deal with a broker. It is always recommended to deal with a good property consultant to get the proper knowledge of the country, the city, the law, the taxes, anything, you know, the property consultant can only help you with this. Uh, property developer let's say if you go and to purchase a property with them they're gonna ask you like which uh, project you're looking to buy okay what unit you're looking to buy okay give me the check give me this and then that's it and it's only if they go directly to the developer such as Ima, yeah. Ellington, yeah. Super yeah. they will only that agent will only sell Ellington for example yeah yeah you're right so basically they will not give you they will all say like hey um, we are the best we are the best if anyone is coming, they're gonna say like, we are the best. A property consultant can play a major role in this. Property consultant can understand your property investment requirement. Then he can guide you based on your, the money, what you wanna put in real estate market. Let's say if someone wants to purchase a million dollar property in Dubai, then property consultant can put five different options for you, for you to see, to do the, do your math, to do the comparison, then that's then you can literally take your decision. If you go straight to one one developer, then they're gonna say like we are the best and this is the best project to buy. So you're only limited to one product. When you use the property consultant, you will have so many options on the table. Then property consultant can guide you in a right direction to achieve your target investing in Dubai real estate. And where do your most clients come from around the globe? So basically, my clients are from Canada, UK, America, India, Pakistan, and there are a lot of uh, uh, Pakistani, uh, British, a lot of Bengali British. So I have this young dude, uh, 29 years old, Bangladeshi, British citizen, and he purchased four properties in one month. So he was just a ordinary guy. He showed up on the viewing and I wanted to sell him in Jumeirah Golf Estate, Al-Andalus Apartments. So when I, he turned up and I looked at him, I said like, hey, for me, what I believe is providing the services is the major key to the success. Never judge anyone based on how they look from outside or how they are from inside. As a real estate property consultant, what you gotta do is you gotta just showcase and do your job what the best you can do. And you can tell them, you can educate them, and you never know who you are meeting and who's capable of buying what. So always believe in providing the right knowledge to your client, educate them, just understand why they want to invest in Dubai real estate. So say, uh, tell me one of your best deals you just made recently in the last couple of months, last one or two years, Very for you and for the client. Yes, uh, definitely I like to share my experience. Recently I sold a three bedroom unit in Blue Waters and it was three bedroom apartment. Uh, my client, she bought it from me 18 months ago. Uh, she bought it for 4.8 million dirham. And after 18 months, I found a buyer for her and I resold the property for 13.7 million dirham. Just in a span of 18 months, she made a nine million dirham profit. And there are buyers now, multiple buyers are in the market. Someone who wants to buy the property straight away, they want ready to move in property and they're willing to pay any price you're asking to pay, but that price should be based on the market. So that was the, mar that was the current that market, was the market value yeah, in Blue Water. 13.7 million dollars. So because there's no, there's not nothing available anymore. There's so no, no area to build the, in Blue the, Water. The area is very limited. Yeah. So if we talk about Blue Water's inventory, the apartment inventory, I think there's somewhere about uh, 600 units only. Mm. 
in whole blue water. So the moment you buy in less inventory area, mm -hmm. then your reselling demand is going to be much higher. But did you market the property on yes. Property Finder? Yeah. So basically, so they based that price. Yeah. So basically, we did market uh, the Property Finder on the Property Finder, uh, the property. But uh, one of my friend's friends, he wanted to buy a property. Then he approached me as a real estate mm. consultant. He knows I'm working in Dubai real estate. He said, like, Saeed, uh, one of my friends is looking to purchase this property. What do you advise? Then I looked at my stock. I said, like, I do have a property, which is amazing. And I said to him, like, the property is selling for 13.7 million. And the guy was willing to pay this price. And he was looking at multiple options in the market. Similar unit was selling for 15 plus million dollars. So my unit was still the cheaper in the market, 13.7 for him. So it was a great deal for a buyer to buy for 13.7 million dirham instead of looking at the similar property option over 15 million dirham. And that was when? How many so months ago? We're talking now? about uh, two months ago. Two months ago. Yeah. And where do you think the price will go up to? I think uh, Blue Waters, what we are uh, seeing right now is uh, the prices is uh, uh, gonna stable now. It's not gonna go, in, in my opinion, it's not gonna go much higher than this price. So uh, the one who bought it, previous investors, they all are making their money, even tripling their money in Blue Waters. Wow. People will know that a couple of years. When was Blue Water completed? So if I tell you, like we're talking about uh, through th two, three years. Two, three years ago. Yeah. When you look back two, three years ago, uh, if someone it was pretty bought, empty. They have the restaurants, all the shops. Uh, they have the, 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 the bridge from Marina, GBI, you can walk through. So it's a lot of people. It's, and the beach clubs, they have there, the hotels. Yes, so it's yes, a very nice yes. area. Oh, I'll just delete that out. Um, so what makes Blue Water so special? So I feel like uh, Blue Waters is uh, very limited when it comes to the residential units. And uh, you have a lot of uh, retails uh, in Blue Waters. Then you have a beach clubs. Then you have a lots of uh, adventurous places in Blue Waters. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a bridge connecting from Blue Waters to JVR. People, they like to jog in the morning. They, they like to, uh, you know, like a cross from JVR to me, myself, uh, I took a uh, travel uh, jog from JVR to Blue Waters. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful place to live in. And we have a international hotel brands. So we have now Bunyan Tree is one of the very popular mm -hmm. hotel brand in Blue Waters. Mm -hmm. What do you expect in the future? Uh, as you heard, the new airport is going to be ready in about five to 10 years. We'll bring another 260 million passengers a year, the biggest airport in the world five, six terminals. Um, do you think there will be, that's going to be the future market? They call it Dubai 2, correct? So if I tell you about this, uh, it's a very, uh, you know, like a government is expanding in a massive scale. Government decided to spend $35 billion just the expansion for this uh, airport. And that's going to be like a five times bigger than what we have in uh, Dubai International Airport. So uh, this is a plan for 10 years. And uh, I think all the flights is gonna move to uh, Dubai South once the airport is operational in a full capacity. And it's a very good uh, initiative by the government. And I would say like, hey, Dubai always shocked the world with the big stuff. So just like imagine $35 billion just for expansion. And can a uh, airport can accommodate 260 million passengers. Do you think that uh, is a good investment opportunity for single investors? Families going to move there? Uh, that the prices are still, like, say, very cheap. Um, so is, is that a good place now to start there? Are uh, like a lot of brokers marketing that area, or will it take, as you say, the airport is not going to come in about 10 years? Should you start now? So in my opinion, like uh, you always have to, as an investor or the buyer of real estate, you always have to look for the opportunity. So Dubai South is a great opportunity for anyone who wants to buy a Dubai real estate in 2024. So you got to come forward, put your money in Dubai South. Once the airport is operational, the price is going to go rocket sky. 
we have uh, major developers working in Dubai South. Uh, we have Imar selling townhouses and uh, independent uh, standalone villas. Then we have a Dubai South itself selling townhouses and villas. So we have uh, multiple major developers working in Dubai South. I think it is the right time for anyone who wants to buy a property in Dubai to invest in Dubai South and wait, do not sell the property. And once you get closer to the handover, it is the time for the investor to see if they are getting a good profit. When you see the profit, when you always, when you double your profit, then that's it. That's the time to exit. But you just talk about townhouses and villas. What about apartments? Are they developers starting? There also? are apartments as well. So in my opinion, like a townhouses and villas can bring the major profit in Dubai real estate compared to apartment. This is my personal opinion. And uh, yeah. But most people now, what I experience, even the brokers, they are still not concentrating on Dubai South yet because I think there's still a lot of developers haven't planned so far, correct? They're still in this area developing the new properties, is it correct? If you see Dubai 2002, and what it was and if you see today 2024 there's a major difference i think no country has achieved what uae achieved and what dubai achieved this is a massive transformation for a country to be at this level and be at the top of the world and people they used to think like, I don't want to go to Jumeirah Lake Towers, it's too far. I don't want to buy in uh, Emirates Hills, Meadows. Now, if you want to purchase a property in, in today's market, you are paying 30%, 40% premium. As an investor, you should look at the area which is not developed. That's the major profit you're gonna see out of your real estate investment. Uh, yeah, thanks for part one, Sayed. And Thank you so we'll much. We'll continue part two with investment opportunities. What's possible in Dubai? What's the future going to bring? Uh, how much money you have to bring to buy apartments, villas, townhouses, and uh, yeah, give us all your future experience. You're welcome, Chris. Uh, I would be glad to connect with you again, and definitely we can share our knowledge and experience to educate the viewers to understand how they can invest and how they can use Dubai. Uh, investment platform and how they can benefit from it. Thank you. You're welcome.